Chap, the second of the three stages of adolescence that you've articulated is middle adolescence, roughly high school. And again, you've brought to it the sociologist perspective that there is something in common with all the other ages, but something distinct and unique about this particular age group in how they encounter the world, how they stand in front of the world, and how we can be helpful to them as ministers of Christ. Help us understand a little bit how we can do that. Okay, well, what happens is when you, right around the time, from, it's really interesting we have the timing of middle school to high school because right around ninth grade is when the brain starts to shift, and it has for eons as best as we understand it. So you move towards this abstract ability which means you're moving from first person to third person. And ninth grade is this kind of stark reality that all of a sudden I'm more aware of my environment than I ever was before as a middle school kid. Uh, and then you move towards freshman, sophomore, even junior year become much more reflective and much more critical and much more evaluative of your environment and your relationships. And so those of us that are working with high school students and even young college, like first or second year out of high school, there's this... There's this season where a kid is aware that they impact others by their behavior and attitude, but they don't seem to care very much. That, that is like, yeah, I know my attitude is terrible and it hurts your feelings, but what about me? And, and I don't mean to say that in a way that's pejorative and mean to kids, and sometimes people misinterpret me saying that, that I'm like everybody else just hammering high school kids. Most adults don't like high school kids very much or are scared of them. But really what's going on is they don't, they're in the middle of this lengthy th period of time, 15 years or so, and they are now more aware that they're part of this environmental and societal kind of landscape, but they really don't, haven't been trained on what that means and how to relate, how to access their core person and connect to others. They don't really have the developmental capacity for cause and effect that doesn't come to late adolescence in the brain development. So, but they got to be somebody. They go into English, and an English teacher expects them to be somebody. So they decide, I need to create a self. Susan Harder from University of Denver writes on this in The Construction of the Self. Really great stuff. Hard book to read. Let me summarize it. Is the idea is you go into English, you don't know who you are, but you got to be somebody. So you create this English self. And it's fully you, but it's not the inner you. And we as adults love to say, now hold on a second, we compartmentalize, we wear masks. No, don't think of that way with your high school kids. What they are, they bring the full self there because they don't have a core self to draw from yet. It hasn't developed. And then, but when they leave English and they go to math, and it's a different self because it's a different social environment. They go to sport, different environment. They come to church. This is the key. See, we see them in youth group. We see them uh, in parachurch. We see them as worship see them with their families, and they have these selves that are identified with a religious community. That's not fully them. It, it's as much of them as they know. They don't know they're doing this. So what do you do with this egocentric abstraction, this life's filtered through their own experience, trying to make their way through a culture of performance and conformity, deep anxiety. Lots of people are saying this is the most stressed generation in history during this period probably the loneliest and most isolated. You say, they have great friends. No, there's rules to their friendships. And I write about this in other places and Hurt 2.0 in other places. But it, what you need to realize is every one of these kids um, on the inside is trying to pull together these various selves. He's trying to figure out, how, how do I go into this environment with you as the adult that has all the power, that controls the environment, the program, the church, whatever it is we're doing, the sport, how can we transcend and break that, well, that kind of a separation? How do we break through the wall of distrust and fear and isolation? That's the, that's the journey. You can't think of your high school kids as a youth group. You've got to think of them as a collection of individual people that are highly atomized, alone, and that we as adults need to come alongside, look them deeply in the eye, and prove that we actually care about them without making them feel more shamed.